Ask any whiskey investment firm, the quickest way to make money is to basically buy a cask and bottle it. It's essentially a license to print money. Basically, you take a really cheap cask of whiskey and you turn it into a really expensive bottle that sells like that from the shelves. And you just literally, the, the problem with bottling casks, according to some of these companies, is fighting the money coming at your bank account because you're going to be fighting it off because there's so much money to be made from bottling a cask of whiskey. But if you ask anyone in the industry or any independent bottler, the reality couldn't be far from the truth. It's expensive to bottle a cask of whiskey. So let's go through and see just how expensive it is to bottle a cask of whiskey. Now, in this video, we're gonna use a mythical cask. We're gonna use a 10,000 pound, a cask that we've just bought for 10,000 pounds. It's got 185 bulk liters at 52.7% ABV, giving us an RLA or a liters of pure alcohol or regauge liters of alcohol there of 97.49. So if you imagine that there's two compounds in whiskey, ethanol and water, the ABV is the ratio of ethanol to water. This cask with 185 litres there has a theoretical yield of 264 bottles, which gives us a cost of £37.88 a bottle. Bloody hell, that's cheap, isn't it? Oh yes, that's really cheap. And that's how these investment companies suck you in. They divide the purchase price by the number of bottles and you get your theoretical cost of a bottle, £37.88. That's the very first misleading point and a very big red flag if you see anybody describing a cask in terms of its bottle yield. But it's also misleading for another reason. And let's clarify this because this is important. How big's a bottle? In the US, a bottle is 750 mil. In the UK, a bottle is 700 mil. It could also be 500 mil or 200 mil. A bottle is a vessel. So in this video, we're looking at 700 mil bottles. Now, as you will come to find, there is somebody who likes whiskey more than anybody else on the planet, and that is HMRC. They love whiskey because it gives them loads of money through taxes. So the first point that we need to address here is the VAT that's going to be payable. Now, VAT is payable when you take the whiskey out of bond. And of course, if you're bottling your whiskey and selling it in the UK market, you're going to have to take it out of bond, out of VAT suspense and pay the duty. So that £10,000 cask is going to have 20% of VAT applied to it, as in £2,000. So our bottle price has now gone up to £45.45 .45, or I did actually do this on a calculator before I realised the math was stupid, a 20% rise in cost. The second one, and again, another good reason, or two really good reasons why HMRC uh, love whiskey is, or the duty, because you're gonna to have to pay duty on the liters of alcohol. And as we mentioned in the start here, we've, we've got 97.49 liters of alcohol. At the moment, the, the rate has just increased to 31 pounds 64 per liter of alcohol which gives us a cost of £3,084.74. So you've got to pay the duty, as in the tax, on the liquid. But hang on a minute, it gets better. There's VAT on top of the duty, as in there's tax on a tax. So now you've got 20% of £3,084.74. 20% of that is £616.95. So basically, after your duty and the VAT are paid, on, on, on this element of it, you've got £3,701.69 pence worth of costs, which brings your bottle price up to £59.47, which is 56% higher than when we, when we first started. And all we've done is pay the UK taxes on this. Now, the next one, number three, this is where, from number three onwards, this is where all the pricing gets a little bit disconnected because it's basically subjective costs. Now, this has to be included because chart cost number three is the cost of moving your whiskey from its bonded warehouse location to the bottling facility. And then from the bottling facility, you're gonna have all your bottles delivered to you and wherever you are in the UK. Now, in the UK, you can, you can pick up an uplift for very little from, from, if you're doing a bulk uplift of casks, if you're booking car times to take a whole you know, container full of, of, of casks from location A to location B, you can group them and the cost is very cheap. But if you're moving one cask at a time, it's expensive. So for this point and the onward chipping of that pallet of whiskey, your 260 odd bottles on a pallet, it isn't going to be cheap. It needs to be done with care and consideration. So let's throw 700 pounds at this now to cover the cost of moving the cask to the bottling facility and also moving the bottles to your retail premises or wherever you want to hold them. So that's gonna bring the bottle price up now to 62 pound 12 a bottle or 63% higher than that original first figure. 
Now, this is where we started to get interesting. You've got a container, a cask full of whiskey, and you need to put that into another container, a bottle, in order for it to be done in retail. Now, you've got costs here now, including bottling in terms of paying the facility to put all of that liquid into the bottles, but you also have all your dry goods to contend with. You have got your glass bottle itself. You have got the capsule that goes on the, well, you've got your cork, your, your closure that goes on there. You've then got the capsule that then goes over all of that. You've then also got the label, which might just be your front label. You might have a back label as well, but hang on a minute, who's designing those labels for you? You know, if you want to put together a really shit bottle, the best way to do it is to design the label yourself rather than appointing a really good designer. People don't care about the whiskey. Your product needs to stand out and that will only happen with a good label. Furthermore, that label needs to be printed on special paper and special glue, because look at this bottle. This bottle has been in my car overnight and you can see a nice coating of condensation where it has changed temperature. Now, that can happen in transit. And if you don't use special glue on your labels, those labels will go boop. And as soon as you get to the retailers, those labels will have fallen off. So look at 10 pounds per unit as a very basic measure to cover the label design, the label printing, the glass bottle, the capsule and the stopper. And that's all super basic. If you want to go to something like this, like a Glencairn Supreme that you see people using, it's gonna cost more money, especially if you're ordering small amounts. You want one of these stoppers? Well, that's gonna cost you more money. You want a label on the back? That's gonna cost you more money. You want a nice bit of gold or copper foiling on there? That's gonna cost you more money. If you want a bit of embossing or several layers of foiling, that's gonna cost you more money. You want a designer to do a really good job of it? That's gonna cost you more money. You get the point. Okay, so we've got 10 pound a unit times 264 units, so you've got £2,640 worth of costs. Let's touch this up. So total, £12,000 purchase in VAT. You've got all your bottling and dry goods, you've got your uplift and you've got your duty and taxes. So that £10,000 cask, the break even point now is £19,041.69, AKA £72 per bottle, which is 90% more than that original figure. If you're enjoying this video, like and subscribe and also visit the shop at marklittler.com to find hundreds of old and rare bottles for sale. And we've got everything from tens of thousands of pounds worth of Karazawa and Yamazaki down to bottles for sort of one, two, three hundred pounds. And if you're looking to sell your bottle, you can also get in touch and we can help you with that. So now, the first part of this video, we looked at the physical costs of bottling your cask of whiskey, but that only gets you to a basic, it gets you this, somebody, something that nobody, you, you've, you've basically got a cask of whiskey sat in your garage. How on earth are you gonna sell it? Well, look, this is where the costs become intangible because they can just rack up and rack up and rack up. Now, the first question that you've got to ask yourself, why do people want your whiskey? What's your cask of Kalila or Brocladi or whatever you've bought? Who cares about it? Because it's your brand. Who are you? Nobody. Seriously, think about it. Why would somebody buy your branded product over another branded product that they might recognize even more, such as from a very established independent bottler like Gordon and McPhail or something, or down to somebody like Compass Box, who are an independent bottler still, but have a very big brand presence. You can also buy whiskey direct from the distilleries at a low point in price, as in a Macallan 12 year old will cost you 78 quid. So come on, what's your 12 year old whiskey gonna cost you? Because I can go and buy a bottle of 12 year old Macallan, thank you very much, for 78 pounds. Yours better be better than that. Glen Farkas, 15 year olds, 75 quid. Glen Morangy, 18 year olds, 106 pounds. And Dalmore, 15 year olds, 99 pounds. So look, come on, you're dealing with a lot of competition here. And that's the key thing. What's differentiating you apart from your really crap label design? But hang on a minute, because there is some important points to note about the profits coming at the very end of the video. So make sure you listen to that. The next thing that you've got to look at is your profit margin. So let's assume that you've thought about your brand and why people are going to buy it. The why. Look at your profit margin. Now, Everybody in this industry will be working on slightly different models, but there is a way that we can sort of unify this and give you a base price. So the industry standard, according to Diageo, and 
I think we can kind of, let's assume Diageo kind of know what they're doing here. The industry standard, according to Diageo, is 60% gross profit. And that's, they say, if you can't make that, you don't want to start a business. Now, lots of smaller independents will work on a lot, lot smaller margin than that but that is a base model that you can externally verify. So if you're not making a profit anywhere near that, you need to think, well, hang on a minute, why are we doing this? Next cost is related to the points above, your gross profit and also the who the hell is gonna buy it because you've got to look at your marketing. How are people gonna find your bottle of whiskey? So first way, let's send it over to a retailer to let them do the retailing for it. Fine, you do that bulk supply, but why Why is that retailer gonna take your bottle over somebody else's bottle from a, a retailer or for, from an independent bottle that they know have got an established core audience? The way that you might do that is by having a more attractive price point, but then of course that's gonna hammer your profits. You could also choose to sell them all in auction. Well, congratulations, you've just swamped the market with your bottle and there's no competition for it. And you've probably just killed a bit of your branding as well if some of them go really badly. So look at your marketing budget because your marketing budget may include how much profit you want to give over to the retailer when they sell it, or your marketing budget may be how much money if you've got the appropriate AWRS personal and premises licenses and licenses to do the distribution yourself, you could look at doing it yourself and looking at your ad cost for on Facebook ads and things like that in order to distribute the adverts to people to find who would might want to buy your bottles. But there's a big problem, a huge problem with what I've just explained in this video. Everything that I've explained in this video assumes that you're buying a cask today and bottling it and selling it today. So your profit margins are trashed. But very few people do this. The, the, the model of the industry, um, the model of most independent bottles where they've got the capital behind them, is to run a maturation program. A maturation program is where you buy young whiskey and essentially you sell and bottle old whiskey. Now, we know from earlier that our cost is £72 a bottle, which might be very expensive for a five or eight or 10 year old whiskey, whatever you've bought there. But if you let that cask of whiskey get to 18 years of age or 25 years of age or 30 years of age, I know there are gonna be fluctuations in the, in, in the cost of taxes, but your base cost remains the same. So let's say that your 72 pound is fixed. You know, if that's a 50 year old whiskey, you might be selling that for two or 3,000 pounds a bottle. So you've got a massive margin. But so the key here is patience because no independent bottling can be profitable without either scalping somebody when you're buying the cask from them. So you're basically, you're buying the cost, you're buying the profit at the expense of the previous owner's profit or adding value to this, either through your marketing and through your creativity and that side of things, or by leaving that whiskey to mature for long enough so that there is a dis, you know, there's, there's a growth in value related to the age of that product of whiskey. Because if you're trying to sell a five-year-old whiskey at 72 pounds a bottle, it would be difficult. If you're trying to sell a 21-year-old whiskey at 72 pounds a bottle, then that is a different revelation altogether. So there we have it. It's a very brief, but semi-in-depth overview about how much it costs to bottle a cask of whiskey. Yes, it can be profitable if you do it in the right way, but please don't be hoodwinked into thinking that buying a cask and bottling it and releasing the bottles is profitable because of all of the above reasons.